Mike Demers along with the King Scott Engel for the Fantasy Sports Network at City Field with another episode of At the Ballpark. And today we got the heavy hitters, the number one team in baseball hitting wise, the Toronto Blue Jays, Scott. Yes, you know, this has by far been the best offense in the major leagues in terms of run differential and just overall all runs entering the week. Uh, you know, lots of great offense for fantasy players, but also lots of health concerns when you talk about two of the big hitters. And one of the guys we caught up with, former major leaguer and current analyst for the Jays, Pat Tabler. He compared this team, Scott, to a team from the 70s, the Big Red Machine. It's been crazy. It's been as good as I've ever seen it. Uh, and we're talking about some world championship teams back in the 90s, early 90s. And a friend of mine asked me the other day, he said, have you ever seen an offense like this before? And I said, yeah. Big Red Machine back in the <laughs> 70s. That's how good they've been playing. You know what they've done is they've played really well together as a team. They just played up in Boston, and they played 29 innings, and they had an extra inning game. They only scored in nine of them. They scored 31 runs. They, they've really started bunching their hits together. So, Scott, on that big red machine, of course, was Johnny Bench. Do we compare a Josh Donaldson to a Johnny Bench or a George Foster, maybe? Well, Donaldson's off to the best start of his career. Moving to this park, obviously, has been a boon for him. But I think he's due for some regression. You look at his isolated power, it's uh, bigger than it's ever been in his career. And also, you look at his batting average, his batting average is well over what it usually would be. Uh, Donaldson's due for some regression, but top fantasy third baseman, or at least one of them in, so far, the move to Toronto has been everything that fantasy players hoped it could be, and he's been well worth the late first round pick. And one player fantasy owners are really looking at riding while they're hot is Chris Colabello, but is he a guy fantasy owners should really stick with? You know, this is a loaded question because I've taken so much crap for this over the year and a half with Chris Colabello, but look, it is what it is. He's a respectable fifth fantasy outfielder. I think you ride him while he's hot, especially when you're playing in daily fantasy games. But from the seasonal perspective, Calabello may have learned something from last year when he started off hot and then he really cooled off in a big way. Baseball is a constant game of adjustments. The pitchers adjusted to him last year and he went cold. Now he's back and even though his BABIP is like through the roof and he's due for some regression, this is a guy that can still hit about 280 with maybe about 13 to 15 home runs in the end and that helps your fantasy team. And Scott, one guy fantasy owner has been riding for his power has been Jose Bautista. Yeah, Jose, uh, there have been there have been issues with his shoulder uh, to the point where he had to get a cortisone shot not too long ago because it was really affecting his quality of life. But uh, And he wasn't even uh, able to play the outfield until early June. But at least from a power perspective, he looks like he's healthy. Injuries have been often an issue for him, even though he played 155 games the last year. But he did hit two home runs in a game this week. So there's still a lot of reasons to be confident in Batista, but I think you know when you get him overall, when he's in there, he's gonna hit for the power, but I think you always have to worry about the health. Uh, the shoulder may continue to be an issue. We're gonna have to keep watching this and monitor it. And certainly it's been affecting his average. Another player that's, his average hasn't been what you'd hope for is Edwin Encarcion, uh, but over the last seven games, he is hitting above 360. That's encouraging because Edwin Encarnacion often deals with injuries and often during the second half of the season, but already he's had three injury problems. He had the back in spring training, he had the hamstring, and now he's got the shoulder. Encarnacion had more home runs in any month in May. He is Mr. May, but the batting average, it makes you wonder about his health and also the fact that he often gets injured in the second half. You might want to trade Edwin Encarnacion to somebody that needs some power and maybe get rid of those health headaches. Uh, speaking of headaches, we're at City Field. That means uh, the speakers are very loud, the music's loud, and it's been raining. But one player who really made his career here is Jose Reyes. Now, Jose at the current time is batting 290, but his on-base percentage is only 318. Yeah, Jose was on the DL again. Uh, surprise, surprise. This is the best lineup, one of the best lineups Jose told me that he's ever hit in. The other one was uh, the 2006 Mets. And uh, he's been really hot since he's come off the DL. The conundrum with Pe Reyes is, is that shortstop is such a thin position in fantasy. You want to have him, but he's always getting hurt. I would rather have maybe somebody lesser in the position than worry about the injuries. While Reyes is hot right now, he's another guy that I would try to deal if I could. Well, you can't win a pennant without some pitching, and Drew Hutchinson really uh, has been performing so far with a 1.28 whip. Well, 
Hutchinson has been a tale of two pitchers. For some reason, he's pitched really well at home in a hitter's park, the Rogers Center, but he's been awful on the road. People are expecting a breakthrough year for Hutchinson, but he's just been so up and down, so up and down. Fantasy players overall don't know when to trust him, but whether it's daily fantasy or yearly fantasy, stay away from the guy on the road. For some reason, he pitches really well at home. And we caught up with Hutchinson, uh, and he said basically what his success has to do, it's really nothing magical that him and pitching coach Pete Walker have worked on. Oh, I just need to be consistent. I've had some good starts. I've had, you know, a few. I think it's about finding that consistency, consistency every time out, and uh, for me it's all about fastball command. And Scott, you don't have good pitching without a good catcher, and I think it's been a big surprise the offense that Russell Martin's been putting together uh, over the last seven games hitting above 400. He's been really good from the fifth and the sixth hole, especially this year. And uh, Martin's playing close to home. He is a Canadian guy, and he's hitting 312 at the Rogers Center. Uh, a lot of people wondered why did they sign him to such a big contract. Uh, it wasn't just about offense when fantasy players look about it. He's a clubhouse leader. He's a really good handler of pitchers. This pitching staff is not very good overall, but Martin's certainly doing the job in offense. And look, a good fantasy catcher that you probably got for a value. He's somebody that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be rushing to trade away. I think you always have to shop your guys, but I think you got to be very happy with Martin. I think it's more than anybody expected to this point. All right, he's the King Scott Engel. I'm Mike Demerges for Roto Experts at the Ballpark for the Fantasy Sports Network.